Welcome back, everybody. It's time to grab your board and swim out in that big sea of ideas and see if we can't catch a few as we try and build our sales pipeline right here on Sales Pipeline Radio with the man who's done it all, the man who's going to turn my Minnesota Vikings and my Michigan Wolverines around this year. I'm just convinced he's the man that can do it. Matt Hines. Well, our interests are aligned now, Paul. I don't know if we talked about this, but I have uh, Kirk Cousins on my fantasy football team. Ah, and, well, see? I knew yeah, I'd win you over a, somehow. A weeks ago, he literally at one point in the third quarter was in negative fantasy points, so I was not really happy about that. <laughs> but, um, I did what I haven't done in a long time. I paid good money, $350, to go sit and watch the Rams play the Vikings, thinking it would be the beginning of their new run to the Super Bowl, and instead it was the unraveling of the team before my eyes here. Kirk Cousins is okay, but they couldn't stop any. They could stop me from running down the field that day. Uh, I mean, Rams are pretty good. The Rams are pretty good. And as we record this here uh, uh, on October 4th, uh, you know, the, those same Rams are headed up here to Seattle to play the Seahawks on Sunday. And- Look out. Look out! They oh boy, look good. It's gonna be crazy. Yeah, and your, your Michigan Wolverines actually, you know, uh, you know, they actually look pretty decent, except for that, you know, opening loss to Notre Dame have played fairly well. Um, but as is the question every year, can they beat Michigan State? Can they beat Ohio State? I don't know. I thought that their their Jim Harbaugh was the savior we've been waiting for, but I think it's Matt Hines. Well, if that's not a place to transition, <laughs> I don't know what is. If people that join us, if you're, if people joining Sales Pipeline Radio for the first time, I thought I was joining a sales and marketing podcast. Yes, no, no, no. Here we are. No, no, no. In the fall, we talk football first. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us on another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. If you are joining us live on the Funnel Media Radio Network, thanks so much for joining us in the middle of your workday. For those of you listening on the podcast, thanks very much for subscribing. Uh, our numbers, Paul, have been just off the charts in the last that. six months. It's crazy. Uh, we have we have almost doubled our listeners in the last six months. It's been crazy. It's I don't know where everyone's coming from. It's, it's because of the football conversation. That's it's what the, it is. It's absolutely the football conversation. It's the witty banter is what they're coming for. Right. Uh, so thanks very much for subscribing to the podcast and every episode of Sales Pipeline Radio, past, present, and future. You will always find at salespipelineradio.com. We every week are featuring some of the best and brightest minds in B2B sales and marketing today is absolutely no different. Very, very excited to have with us Kristen Alexander, who's been in the B2B space for a long time and is currently the chief marketing officer at Certain. Kristen, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, Matt. I'm delighted to join. Uh, so we, we can certainly talk about college football if you like, um, but we can also just go direct to event marketing. So we, uh, you know, a couple months ago, published together this event marketing playbook. And I want to talk about sort of, you know, we're going to get tactical today. We can talk strategy. But what I liked about this this program we put together is that it actually gets fairly tactical pretty quickly. It's real practical advice to drive real results in organizations that are doing events. And maybe talk about, you know, one of the reasons why we put this together is that I think a lot of people when they do events just kind of do the same old stuff. You get a sponsorship, you get your booth, you go through the motions, and then you're wondering, where the revenue is and why you spend all that money. What 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 are some of the pitfalls that you see from event marketers that, that aren't getting the kind of ROI they need from events today? Yeah, I mean, I think the pitfalls in marketing overall is just it it's so busy. There are a lot of activities. You're constantly, um, you know, you're in perpetual motion. And sometimes events fall in that trap as well where you're in perpetual motion. You're just doing the things you know how to do and, you know, banging things out and getting them out the door. But if you don't pause and think strategically about capturing intent from your event strategy, you're missing a huge opportunity to drive measurable results for your business. So I think the trend now in marketing that I'm seeing is to slow down a little bit, make sure what you're doing is strategic um, to the business, and then maximizing every opportunity you have with the highest quality experience, and the highest quality data strategy to capture intent and use it um, for how you then engage with customers and prospects. And I want to double down a little bit on the, the discussion of data strategy for events because I don't I don't think a lot of event marketers and event managers are thinking about what their data strategy is. Talk about some examples of why managing data and using the right data is so important to getting results out of an event. Sure. I mean, it starts all the way from pre-marketing. So, you know, in the run-up to your um, registration and what we call the registration drive, you might be looking, you know, six months out 
everyone's, you know, on a registration form is asking the basics and trying to ask, you know, minimal information. So, you know, email address, you might have a technology that's filling in the company name based on IP address um, so you know where they're coming from. But once either on that registration form or as you go throughout the process and you're collecting information from folks who have registered, one strategically placed question could make all the, all the difference. Which product are you most interested in learning about, as an example? Or of these um, pain points, which one are you solving for the business as a strategic priority this year? Um, that kind of information is gold for marketers to leverage in terms of how you then continue your marketing and provide the best experience um, for every single attendee based on what their intent is and what they're interested in learning. And then that continues throughout um, the event itself. So, for example, you can think you know, very strategically from a data perspective about your content. I'm having a two-day conference. I have... Um, all of these sessions planned, great. I can actually create a tagging system for all of my sessions. I can create a tagging system for all of my booth demos that tells me, okay, I have product A, B, and C, and these are the customers and prospects that are interested in each. I can connect all of that content and tag it based on pain points, based on... Um, you know, campaign, for example. Any sort of thing that I'm interested in as a marketer, I can start to segment my base, and then all of my marketing can be personalized based on the segments that I'm creating. And if you can do that, then you're really providing the highest level of experience and being smart about nurturing people in the right way. Also, that information now is extremely valuable for sales. And as everybody's talking about ABM and how do you actually, like, execute ABM in channels, you know, other than just advertising, I like to say I think events are the channel where sales and marketing actually come together, physically um, and digitally, because you're working together to actually get in front of people and set meetings, as well as if I have all this information now that's highly relevant from a data perspective about what people are interested in and where they are in their buying journey, I can give that to sales immediately so that their action is targeted and they have a better chance of influencing pipeline and creating new pipeline from that. Well, and you're doing your transi my transitions for me because I wanted to talk about the sales impact of doing this well. We're talking with Kristen Alexander, the CMO of Certain Today on Sales Pipeline Radio. And I think, you know, oftentimes marketers sort of march forward with an event strategy and sales kind of follows along. But I think by doing this smarter up front, by segmenting your list, by understanding which prospects have what intent and what interests and showing what activity, you can help the sales team focus on the right prospects that actually want the meeting to not only get more meetings, but to get more productive meetings. Is, is that something that happens during the production process? How early should companies start planning that cross-functional value of the events they're going to attend? I would say as early as possible, early and often. So um, understanding, you know, the target list that you're going after, sales and marketing together from a registration perspective is critically important. And then in the final, you know, drive to the actual event, you want to be collaborating with sales to set meetings with your highest value customers for upsell and expansion opportunities and your highest value um, prospects. And that could involve things like weekly stand-ups. We have a weekly um, revenue war room, we call it, where we're doing a stand-up literally to talk about what are, what are the opportunities we're working on together, how can we get these meetings set, what's the list, who's on tap for this communication or that communication. Um, leading up to an event, we'll have a daily stand-up. I think a lot of marketers are moving to that model. And then also for the one-on-one -on -one meetings that you're setting during an event, you, you're strategically working with sales to set those as those events are happening, you can also use technology to capture that data signal and automatically send the, the meeting data through your marketing automation platform, through your CRM, in whichever um, way you choose based on your data model, but to make that immediately um, accessible to both teams as well so you can take the next step. 
So there's data you capture and leverage before the event to help you better communicate with and engage with prospects as they as they get to the event. What about during the event? Like, what are some best practices for what cap information you should be looking for? How do you use mobile more effectively to get information in real time from prospects? And how does how does that sort of mobile data collection opportunity help people enhance their event results in real time? Sure. So, I mean, one of the most important things I think I mentioned, which is you really want to capture check-in information for any content experience you have. So if you have, you know, sessions at a conference, for example, you want to know, you want that check-in information. You can also do that, though, not just, you know, even if you're, you know, sponsoring a trade show, for example, or you have a presence where you're hosting product demos, you want to have check-in information for those demos. Through check-in, you can ask custom questions. Um, so is this, for example, um, technology that you have a budget to purchase in this year? You know, those types of questions you can ask and capture for any check-in. The mobile question is a great question. So as you're, engage- as you're li- li- you know, sitting in and listening to a session, for example, you can do surveys and polls, and all of that data can capture, be captured. You can track what content is being downloaded. So I'm giving a presentation and people during the presentation are downloading it because they want to engage with it later. That's a data signal that can be captured. You can capture social engagement by person, but also you can capture this kind of information across an account. So it's much more powerful for me. It's powerful as a marketer to know that you, Matt, are engaging with me um, on product A. But it's even more powerful for me to know that you're not the only one engaging with me on this product. In fact, 50 people from your company are engaging with me on this product, product A. And so uh, now your account intent um, spikes and is much more significant. So I know across your business, this is a pain point that you're grappling with. Um, So that's the kind of data that you can capture um, through mobile. And really, you know, technology supports... Um, in many cases, you know, I'd say in most cases, what you want to achieve as a marketer. So you really need to sit down and think strategically, what am I trying to get out of this? Plan just the, the, the few data points. You can start simple. Plan the few data points that would really be transformational for you to understand about your customers and to understand about your prospects and then design the technology to meet that need. Well, and then you get um, the opportunity to kind of personalize that experience as well, right, by taking some of that data and not just doing follow-up to get them into sales meetings, but also, you know, if you're – if you're using some of that data, even in real time, to customize what you recommend they attend and what what portions of the conference you recommend they take advantage of, you can directly sort of impact the efficacy of the event and the likelihood that people will come back again and tell their friends and, and make it even more successful for you. Exactly. And you can enable your team to do really effective but um, uh, targeted outreach with just a little bit of information. So, for example, um, we use something called VIP Alert. So if we host a party and we have a list of 10 VIPs that are arriving, um, we notify sales via a text message that says, hey, Matt Hines from Hines Marketing just arrived. Um, You you can meet them at the door. Um, And so, you know, sales loves that because they get to have you know, they don't have to work so hard to navigate. They can meet you at the door. Then if we know that you're interested in product A and sales knows that th- these are the three sessions tomorrow that are related to product A, they can follow up with you either in person or by sending you a follow-up message that says, hey, based on our conversation, I know you're interested in this. Tomorrow we're having a session at 10 a.m. Um, to talk about that topic and it would be really great if you could attend. So that's one way to do it, like, very personalized. And then, of course, you can automate that. Um, so as long as you have the data at your fingertips, you can be – it doesn't have to be hard, You can, but you can be strategic and creative about providing that touch that makes me feel then, that, whoa, you really understand me and what I'm interested in, um, and that has a halo effect, you know, on your brand. Love it. If you're if you like what you're hearing, you want to learn more about this. Certainly encourage you to uh, check out uh, the event marketing playbook at certain.com. You go to certain.com, you'll find the resource section and learning center, and you can get a copy of the event marketing playbook. It has a lot of details on this particular topic. We're going to take a quick break, break some, pay some bills. We right back with more with Kristen Alexander, the CMO of Certain. We're going to be talking more about event strategy, chicken or egg. Do you pick the events first, or do you figure out? 
uh, what to do with the events, what your objectives are, how do you measure that impact short term, long term. We'll be right back on Sales Pipeline Radio. It's no longer enough for B2B marketers to feed their sales team with qualified leads, supply them with content, and bid them good luck the rest of the way. Today's full funnel marketers are actively working side by side with the sales team throughout every stage of the buying journey and sales process, embracing revenue responsibility and measuring their impact based on not just sales pipeline contribution, but marketing influence on closed business and direct revenue growth. Download your free copy of Matt Hines' latest book, Full Funnel Marketing at HeinzMarketing.com. That's H-E-I-N-Z Marketing.com. And while you're at it, get uh, Matt's uh, new free playbook on how to uh, play college football better. I, I don't think it's out yeah. yet or not, but uh, it's coming. Yeah, what you what you don't want to download at all is my guide to playing fantasy, <laughs> fantasy football. football yeah. I am not. No, I, I, in fact, my well, if we could go. I could I could lament for a while. I just I just don't. I'm not. Can't. Uh, well, right. So okay. Well, thanks very much for coming back to Sales Pipeline Radio. Really excited to be joined with joined by Kristen Alexander here to talk about event marketing, the event marketing playbook for 2019. We got some great guests coming up over the next few weeks. On Sales Pipeline Radio, we'll be joined in a couple weeks by Laura Vogel. If you are in B2B marketing, you know Laura. She is one of the best uh, event managers I've ever met in B2B. We're going to be talking about what it takes to produce a successful event and how to create an event that your attendees and sponsors and partners uh, and uh, uh, producers alike will all benefit from a couple weeks left after that, we have Jeb Blount. He's one of my favorite authors and speakers in sales. He's uh, written a number of books. His latest book is on handling objections. We're going to be talking about objection handling for sales and how that relates to marketing as well. But I want to get back to talking a little bit more about event marketing with Kristen Alexander. She's the CMO of Certain, uh, who published uh, with us, actually, at a recently the event marketing playbook. And I encourage you to check that out at Certain.com in their resource center. Kristen, let's talk about how to choose events in the first place. Um, and then obviously there's, you know, thinking about your event strategy, you can attend other people's events, you can host your own events. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways to play this, you know, as a, as a marketing leader, how do you think about events as part of the marketing mix? And then how do you evaluate where to spend your time and energy on events once you get to that channel? We do it based on, uh, you know, a heavy ABM strategy. So we're looking to see where our accounts um, our target accounts already are going. So where we sponsor, you know, we'll sponsor events where we know our target accounts have a presence, and not only just our target accounts, but the right titles, the right personas, the right buyers within our target accounts. Um, so we have a mix of those, as well as um, events that we host. And this really depends on the scale of your company, but um, the largest enterprises have a pretty aggressive event strategy where they're hosting events across the spectrum from small field events, dinners, partner events, um, to medium-sized, you know, roadshow-like events where they're showcasing, you know, their latest technology and um, customer case studies and those types of things to the very largest conferences where their customers and prospects are mingling and they're really using that as an opportunity um, to expand within their customers to generate um, pipeline. What's crazy is that at the largest scale, the companies that are really investing heavy in their event strategy um, are seeing results up to 50% of their demand is being generated through events across, you know, product lines uh, around the globe because it's really an opportunity. Think about it. If you're doing business with somebody, you're not going to shell out $50,000, $100,000, or a million dollars or a multi-million dollars without doing business face-to-face. And so, mm-hmm. uh, you know, events provides the opportunity to do that, and so, the, you know, large enterprises take advantage of that opportunity and host their own large conferences from a brand presence and brand awareness perspective down to actually, you know, influencing pipeline and creating um, and closing deals. So I think your mix really depends on size of company, and then it depends on, um, you know, your sales and marketing strategy in terms of how you're getting in front of these accounts. I don't. I can't think of a B two B enterprise that isn't hosting an event strategy, right? Um, there's some mix in there, uh, but it depends on your um, business objective. Well, I think you're right. I think you know if if it, almost every company in B two B does some type of event, it may not be like, oh, we're going to do in Dreamforce with 140 thousand of our of our SaaS friends. It could be that you're you know you're hosting small gatherings of peers, but you know an event is an event. 
it, talk about the role of technology to drive those events. Because I I'd imagine, I mean, you, look, you guys sell an event you know, automation uh, software platform. And I imagine that you guys talk to a lot of people and say, look, we've been doing events. We're fine doing events. We don't need to add to our cost to events. What's your answer to that in terms of talking about the opportunity cost of not raising your game at a more consistent, predictable level with software to support it? I think I don't really... I don't know that I hear that. I don't know if I hear an objection so much to budget, like, hey, we don't have uh, the money to invest anymore in our events because they're expensive. I think the frustration I hear more from marketers is we host events because we know we have to get in front of our customers and prospects, and that works. And we hear good, you know, we, we know that that works from an awareness perspective, from an engagement perspective. We have a hard time, like, quantifying that and justifying it back. And so where marketers struggle is, how do I show the value of this um, objectively? How do I, what are the metrics that I should be using to track success? How do I actually track those and show those back? Um, and that's where it's really helpful to have already identified what data you're capturing, how you're using that data to either show engagement or to show for all the accounts that you touch, for example, you can show pipeline influence. Um, where you're actually creating an opportunity following an event, you can show um, pipeline creation. Where, for example, if you're doing, um, if you're measuring customer satisfaction, you can show, you know, pre-event, post-event customer satisfaction for the accounts you engage with. You can show that through net promoter score. So you really have to think about, okay, what, what data am I capturing from the people that I'm engaging with, and then how can I materially use that to track progress and, and show that I'm generating measurable business results more than just, hey, we had this many people register and we had this many people attend. Everybody can do that. Also, uh, how much revenue are we generating from this event? Everybody's got that locked up. Like, you know, I think, I think the, the basics are covered. Now it's like the next level. How do I show that this event is actually, you know, driving revenue results for my business? And that's where marketers are struggling. Like, hey, I had an event. You know, we did, ca we did capture some data. Getting the data all together in a system is really difficult. Like, then being able to convert that data and show what sales is doing with it is really difficult. Showing that, you know, how do I how do I show influence and you know pipeline contribution? That's those are the questions that I get. Yeah, I I, I agree. And I think that the uh, what you're mentioning there in terms of being able to tell a more revenue centric story about the event the impact events are having is critical. You know, we're beginning of Q4 now and people are starting to think about budget and strategy for the next year, 2019. And you know, we're seeing more and more companies invest in events, invest in you know hosted events, big events, small events, invest more in direct mail and other things that a couple of years ago the growth hackers wouldn't necessarily have done because they were too expensive, right? But I think we're seeing much more many more companies instead of asking how much it costs, they're asking what it's worth. And so they're looking at their most important targets and and investing and doubling down on the tactics that can that can help them do that. And I think that, you know, tools like event automation software can certainly help people get there. What are you seeing um, in the conversations you're having with CMOs that are thinking about 2019? You know, what are you hearing in terms of the role of events and how that's evolving into the new year? I mean, we see growth in that area. So we're seeing more um, aggressive event strategies. Um, we're seeing more, like, cohesion around – we're doing this, you know, type of roadshow, and it's going to be our tent pole event. You know, we might have, you know, three conferences um, that are, you know, the, our most important and strategic conferences for the year, and then we have, you know, these roadshow series, and we need to make sure that there's quality and consistency throughout those roadshow series. So we want, you know, a repeatable playbook for success with those. And so we see focus on those to make them the highest quality uh, possible um, and, you know, extremely engaging events. I think there is a return to both, um, you know, creativity in engagement as well as the analytical functions of proving um, success. So that's nice to see as a marketer because it really, it is, events are about an experience and about a feeling. Um, and then ideally you're layering in, you know, a data strategy that can actually convert 
those engaging experiences into something that's measurable for the business. So um, I like to see that, of course. And no doubt, if you'd like to get more information on some of the tactics we're talking about here relative to really every element of event marketing around your data, your content, your promotion, your metrics, your mobile and technology strategies, definitely check out Certain's event marketing playbook. You can check that out at Certain.com in the resource center, in the learning center. Last question for you, Kristen, before we have to wrap up. Uh, who is, we asked this of most of our guests. Who are some people that have been particularly influential to you in your career? Uh, they can be authors. They can be professors. They can be dead or alive. Uh, people that have really uh, sort of helped guide you as a marketing leader that you might recognize other, or recommend other people check out as well? Sure. Well, I would start, you know, cliche. I think, you know, my parents had a pretty strong work ethic. And um, so obviously uh, that was really um, important to me. I think from a marketing perspective, um, I really admire um, Jamie Barnett's work. Uh, she's the former CMO of Netscope, really well-known uh, you know, very um, creative uh, marketer in terms of um, messaging and positioning and how to go build a category and dominate a category. I also really uh, respect the work of uh, Jennifer Knuckles, who is the CMO of Doctor on Demand and former CMO of um, Zynga. Um, really um, strong um, consumer marketer, uh, now consumer and enterprise marketer as well. Um, I think, you know, honestly, for me, I think my story is similar to many other people. There have been uh, a couple handfuls of mentors in my life who have made a huge difference for me because they believed in me. They believed I was um, creative. They believed that um, I could make anything possible. And when you have somebody who just believes in you, um, and, those, you know, some of those uh, mentors have gone on now is um, being, you know, CEOs. Matt Carter was an early mentor of mine. He's now the CEO of um, Ariaka. And you remember these people because they had this faith in you and gave you a stretch opportunity um, that really helped propel your career, even knowing that you weren't totally prepared for that or ready to go. And so I think those people who have touched you in that way are material, and everyone has those. So you should take a moment to recognize who those people are in your life and stay in touch with them um, because they provide constant source of, you know, reinforcement um, and encouragement. I'm meeting a former boss of mine um, today from Disney who, um, again, gave me a stretch opportunity, uh, which is, uh, his name's Craig Relier, fantastic consumer marketer, one of the most um, creative and insightful people I've ever worked with. And so you take a little bit from all of these people who have helped you along the way um, it. And, it, and it really makes a difference for uh, for your career and, and your evolution, I think, uh, no matter what your discipline is, marketing, sales, or other. Absolutely. Well, that, that's such good advice and good insights that sometimes the people that push us out of our comfort zone and, and maybe make us a little more uncomfortable are those that have the lasting impact. Well, we are way out of time. I'm getting the hook from our great producer, Paul, here. I want to thank everyone for joining us on Sales Pipeline Radio. Thanks so much, Kristen Alexander the CMO at Certain. Make sure you check out Certain.com and get a copy of that event marketing playbook. We will be back next week as we are every week at 1130 Pacific, 230 Eastern for another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. For my great producer, Paul, this is Matt Hines. Thanks for joining us again on Sales Pipeline Radio. You've been listening to another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. Brought to you by the good folks at Matt Hines Marketing right here on the Funnel Radio Network for at-work listeners like you.